Ladies and gentlemen, the head football coach at Army, Coach Monkey. Yeah, yeah, coach. Coach, how are you? I'm great. Thanks, gentlemen. That, that, that cat on that T-shirt is an Army cat taking down a Navy ship. Yeah. Right? Amen, yeah. Coach. <laughs> I like that. I think one. I saw the Army on the collar on that. On that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cat's, a, the cat's a dog. That's right. Uh, for all intents and purposes in this particular conversation, as are you, Coach. You've been in Army, obviously, a long time. You have a massive win over Air Force. Can you talk about the program a little bit? Obviously, we're staring down going to a conference next year. How does that change things for you? And is Army able to recruit? I, I don't think I fully understand how the military schools operate when it comes to finding talent uh, we don't have enough time probably on this show to to uh to fully <laughs> dive into that but i think the move to the american is going to be good for us we've we've valued our independence for a long time here we've been able to play teams from all across the country major conferences uh group of five conferences and and our our schedule really changes from year to year uh, and i and i think there's really an appeal to that it, it has given us a, a platform to be uh, on a national stage. We played a lot of the power, power five teams over the 10 years I've been here, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Duke, uh, I mean, Notre Dame, you name it, West Virginia, Missouri, Wisconsin. And, and that's a great experience for our players. And But it's also a challenge. We played LSU two weeks ago. That's the most talented team I've ever seen in my life. So, um <laughs> Not that the Americans going to be an easy league. They got a, they got a bunch of great teams. Those are those are uh, great universities, and and we're thrilled for the opportunity to join that league. But uh, as for this season, you know, we're we're limping through a little bit. We've had a lot of success here, as you mentioned. We've won a lot of football games, and we had a stretch this this year, and it's the toughest stretch that I've faced as the head coach here. UTSA, who won Conference USA two years in a row, Maybe. Syracuse, Boston College, Troy, who won the Sun Belt last year and may win it again this year, and, and LSU, that was that's a bugger. And uh, we um, we had a tough stretch there, but but uh, big win this past weekend. And those academy games are unreal. That Just the intensity of those rivalries and, and how bad the two teams want to win. I was really proud of our team. It was a great win for us. Hell yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, can, can you explain a little bit for people like I really don't have any idea. I've had friends that have played at service academies, but I know there's so many other things that your players have to deal with and their mandatory obligations. Like, how is it kind of navigating around that and kind of finding your schedule and when you can have the guys and when you can work with them? Well, we're not we don't operate any different than than anybody else does really conceptually. We, we get meeting time with our guys lifting time with our guys, practice time, and, and we're able to maximize the uh, the hours that we're permitted. What's different is all of the other stuff that our guys have going on. Not that other football players don't go to school and have obligations outside of the football building, but I mean, our guys are up every morning at 5.30 for an inspection. Uh, they've got class all morning. There's a lunch inspection that they have to be at. Uh, the the entire corps of cadets lines up in in formation before they file into the to the mess hall for lunch. Uh, they they typically have classes in the afternoon before they come up here. And I mean, guys are racing to get to the bus for you know they get thirty minutes, which is about uh, I guess that's about uh, a lifetime for these guys around here to have thirty minutes of time. But they they jump on the bus or they they run up the hill. And they're dressed and ready to go for meetings or lift at two thirty in the afternoon. Classes let out for them at two, and then we hold them here for for our our time. And you know, it's it's a challenge. We don't get we don't get those extra hours. They don't get those extra uh, moments in the day where they can catch a nap or get treatment if they're injured and those kinds of things. So there, I mean, there's some unique challenges. And we got guys that not only are they getting up at five thirty in the morning. You know, some of them are doing survival swimmings or combatives or boxing or things like that during the course of the day before they ever make it up here for practice. So it's it's pretty unique. But yeah, as I said, I've been here 10 years and uh, and you just kind of find your way and you figure out how to make it all work. And and it's it's really the credit goes to our players. They're they're tough and resilient and they they figure it out. Hell, yeah. They're signing up to represent the United States if we ever you know, need them. And we're very grateful for that. Absolute badasses, all of them, uh, much more courage than I could ever have. So whenever you talk about like Stanford's trying to find like Stanford guys and like Michigan's trying to find like Michigan guys. Now, what does that mean? I mean, uh -oh. Connor Stallion certainly <laughs> took that to a whole nother level, but whenever you're trying to find like guys that are going to be good army, like how do you recruit, like 
How do you find Army guys? Because you got to be able to handle what? 5.30 a.m. every single day, you're going to be getting checked. you got to be a military, but you also have to be a good football player. How do you find that? How do you balance the recruiting, or is it mostly the Army doing the recruiting, and then you just kind of figure out who's coming and can play football? I, I think there's a perception from some people out there that we just gather these lists from, from people that are interested in joining the military or going to the Army, and that that's that it's – completely opposite from that. We we do our recruiting like everybody else. We try to identify players that we think can contribute to our team and play at this level and be competitive. That's number one. If if they can't, then we're not going to recruit those guys. But once we discover a guy that that uh, that we think has the ability to be able to help our football team, then we do a, a pretty deep dive into their academics. Uh, this is one of the most challenging academic schools in the country. And and the rigors here academically are, are, are real. And, and so you know, our guys are taking anywhere from 18 to 22 hours a semester in comparison with, you know, a lot of places where the, where the minimum is 12 and, and guys take 12 hours and which yeah. is great. Um, so our guys have a lot more on their plate. So they got to be able to handle it academically. We look for guys that are leaders, leaders in their schools, leaders in their communities, captains of their team. Um, and then, I want to find a guy that's got all those those things going for him, but I want somebody that's tough, somebody that's competitive, somebody that's a winner. And 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 so we we do a lot of research with high school coaches, guidance counselors, teachers, anybody that's closely related with with those prospects and really find out if if they're the right kind of guy for our program. And and we feel like if they're the right guy kind of guy for our program, then they're going to be a good fit as as a as a West Pointer and as an army officer. So uh, I think that the mission of this academy and the and the mission of our program, uh, the values of, of our army and, and what we value as a football program are right in line. And and so I, I'm I'm really proud of the guys we got in our program and I'm I'm particularly proud of seeing those guys go out and serve and seeing what they do in the army when they're when they're done here. Yeah, save America. Yep. Yeah. Hey, let's see if you Amen. can run, let's see if you can run a nice third and short, but also in about three years from now, we're also gonna be dropping your ass in the middle of Fallujah. Need to, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Need yeah. uh, need. need to do that thing. It's uh I went to West Virginia. So, you know, the academics yeah, you know, not necessarily there. 12 hours every semester. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and move that. <laughs> but then you're also expecting these guys to potentially be able to run four fours. It's a bananas thing. You got your work cut out for you. Love the record you've been able to build down there and the teams. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, with all the things you just said about the players that you get, it sounds like you just got fucking dogs across the board when it comes to your players. And obviously to go to West Point, you have to be an absolute weapon of mass destruction just to sign that line. And I'm sure because of that, that adding in football just kind of reiterates the fact of how like committed these kids are and how much they do want to play football because of that is it easier or harder to motivate the team because you know when you're talking about football a lot of coaches they used to at least the ones that I played for used to kind of you know make the analogy of win every battle you win the war things like that when you're talking to your players they are actually gonna go to war so is is there <laughs> is there a difference in that when you're motivating them especially when it you know you think about the other teams that you have coached for in the past our guys are tough and uh yeah and and that i really i value that in them more than anything we're not we don't ever claim to be more talented than the teams we're playing and and it doesn't mean we're void of talent we got some talented players but to to out talent another football team at the FBS level that doesn't happen very often here. And that's just, that's just being Frank. Our guys got to be tougher. They got to be more fundamentally sound. They got to play together. They got to play their assignments and they got to battle to the end. And I, I think this place, West Point really, it, it, it forges a toughness in people that are here. And, and that that's good. It's good for our program. But I think, in our program and what we challenge our guys to do to, to take on big teams like LSU and Boston College and Ohio State and Notre Dame and people like that. And 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 our guys have battled with them. They've we've gone toe to toe with some really great football teams. And it's it's a toughness that's part of this this culture in this program. And yeah. and it, it's because of who those guys are. But the motivation really for our players comes from from the the bonds of brotherhood that they build when they're here it's a shared experience it's it's unlike any other college i mean they're going through the 5:30 a.m. inspections and the 
and the drills and wearing a uniform every day. They go out in the summers and part of our part of our summer training is they spend time in the field uh, playing army. I mean, they're they're out there and in camo and got the the stuff all over their face and they're running around shooting at bad guys and and learning to be soldiers and and leading soldiers and it, it, you sleep out in the woods for three weeks and you're eating MREs which if you don't know what an MRE is oh so good it, so it, delicious yeah it, it's a it's a, it's a plastic bag lunch uh and and breakfast and dinner too and uh, it's not easy and nothing nothing about this experience is easy but. West Point wasn't designed to be easy. It's it's designed to be tough. Hell tough yeah. people to put them out and lead other tough people. The the people that we need to do the jobs that that most of us aren't willing or able to do to defend the freedoms that we we enjoy. So uh, I mean, it's an incredible group of guys. They play really hard for each other. They there's a genuine love and trust for each other in our locker room, and and that that motivates them. And uh, and you know they're they're also twenty year old. Young men, sometimes they, they need a little extra motivation, and that's why they got us. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like we're lucky we got them. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are we doing cardio today? Cardio? War. We're doing war today. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's cardio. Sweet. Yeah, survive for the next 14 hours. Yeah. Oh. Okay, we're running we're running 110s at West Virginia. <laughs> well, we're going to war today, so let's enjoy it. What a crew. What a special bunch. Last question here from Coach Chuck Pagano. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Massive respect Hi, for you and what you've done throughout your coaching career. Um, you grew Same. up in a coaching family. Uh, I did as well. I don't know if you played for your dad. I know your dad, Mike, uh, was a football coach. Uh, brother was a coach. Your cousin, uh, Todd, is the offensive coordinator over at the Ravens. Uh, shout out to him. Had beers with him, by the way, in a, right. Right. at the pool in uh, uh, Bellagio a couple summers ago in <laughs> Vegas. Great, Good great, beer drinker. Great, great dude. Surprised. Great beer drinker. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> awesome. But I was just wondering what it was like because I had such a great experience growing up in a football family, playing for my dad, all that kind of stuff. And uh wonder what your experience was like. And my dad tried to talk me out of it, tried to talk my little brother out of, <laughs> out of the coaching deal, said this is no life you want to lead but what was that like for you and was there ever a point you know before you became a coach you wanted uh, to consider doing anything else coach you and I uh you and I grew up exactly the same I <laughs> I never wanted to do anything else never considered doing anything else my my parents tried to talk me out of it too uh my dad was my high school coach and and I had a great life growing up from from when I was a little boy handing out equipment in preseason and and mixing Gatorade on the sideline and and traveling on the school bus to games. I had a great life and I just never wanted to do anything else. I was fortunate uh, that there there was Division three football and because uh, it was if there was Division four, I'd have had to play Division four. But I had a great <laughs> in college football and uh, Carl Pelker was my my coach at Milliken University and. He was very encouraging and really, really encouraged me to 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 follow that dream to be a coach and and uh, so I, I've I've man I've had a great life and uh, my my dad was one of five boys in his family all high school coaches in the state of Illinois when I was growing up seven of us were sons of those five brothers went into the coaching profession so we either weren't smart enough to do anything else uh, which is probably the case but we uh, we just had such a great experience with our dads and and uh, love the game and love what it does for people. And so I, I love your stories because they're, they're exactly the same as mine. Hey, football families are a beautiful thing, just like the sport of football, bringing people together. And the boys that you have playing football, please send our thanks to all of them for not only what they're doing now, but obviously what they're going to do for all of us in the future. Coach, have a great re uh, rest of the way. Good luck in the conference transition. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Beat Navy. Oh, hey, Gillette Stadium. Hell yeah. That's a big one, right? These are big. That's a big one. Army Navy, that's a big one. Are we already preparing for it? Heck yeah. Every day. I don't apologize for that. We try to beat those guys every day around here. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Jeff Mall. Yeah, Coach!